morning, Babaroos return to Ewood Park this past weekend as we stuck three past Rotherham to go three points away from top bloody sport. We're going to take a look at that and more next. That's right, folks. Bounce, give another match review. Looking back, Blower Rose's latest match out in the championship, a 3 0 job of Rotherham, which of course pushes us within touching distance of top spot. And we'll get to that in just one second. If you know where you've been, smash your subscribe and back to all things Rovers related, championship related, World Cup related later this year. Of course, before we jump in the deep end, a big shout out to Blue Rose Capital for sponsoring this video. Uh, the masters behind the, the plans there appreciate the support. But what about that performance? 3 0. Uh, and well done, well done. Within touching distance we can smell the automatics from here we can even smell the place even though we're not in them uh but we are within touch distance we'll take a look at all of a second of course big shout out to the, the patrons as well uh we're gonna jump in the deep end and have our little look i think somehow how are we gonna do this how are we going to do this i think we get rid of that i think we get rid of this so let's get into it yes here we go then uh of course having a look at how we all got on uh, and let's get the old sponsor back up there because they do appreciate it and need it. Of course, as you see for the stats here, uh, a, a match that was dominated by Rovers, 55% possession compared to 45% uh, percent possession for uh, Rotherham. Of course, uh, we had 19 shots. It didn't feel like it, did it? It did not feel like it, especially the first half. Uh, 19 shots, so it was just nine for Rotherham, four of them off target, which made for a very, very busy keep. And hopefully that is reflected uh, by the uh, match ratings in the second when we uh, see a third party point of view of the match rating. Of course, just five hour shots off target for Rotherham. Okay, we'll, we'll break that down a little bit, of course, and a bit more clarity of how many shots were actually on target. Uh, two shots saved, three uh, for Rotherham there. We had eight corners compared to their three, eight free kicks compared to their seven. Uh, but the goals, goals came in in the first half. Diaz from the penalty spot. We got that one right. Thank heavens for that. Uh, I think Smarch was yanked down in the box. Great ball there by Buckley uh, to put Smarch in a very, very good place. Um, and he had a very lively match, of course, rewarded by a later goal. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, he was also involved in the second, though. In fact, get a hundred on three goals, uh, if, my, if my memory serves me. So he's yanked in the box, down. Uh, he created the assist. He was the assist maker. Or he, was the, he had the assist for the second goal for Diaz's second on the 63rd minute. Uh, beautiful cross. Uh, there he was on the money, Diaz. That's what, that's what he's been brought in, to create goals, score goals. And he had in all three, one hand in all three uh, today. And then, of course, he put the ball in the back of that on the 75th minute. Uh, Tyree Stone with the substitution and then uh, he uh, with the assist himself. So Dolan to, to Smosh, fantastic goal, great goal. Um, and worthy of the win in the end. And I've got to give credit to Rotherham. They weren't they weren't garbage. They were decent. They were a handful. But uh, once we got that penalty, it kind of swung in our favour. They tried, tried to, to, to retaliate and, and build something of themselves. Um, but once we got the second goal, it was, we, we, it was again, a lot of fight back from Rotherham. Um, but it, uh, the third goal was incoming. So a big shout out to Jacob and Alexander Haven for the picks. They picked 3-0 uh, out uh, live on the pregame show. So well done to them. I went with a 2 nil win. So pretty happy with that. So take a look at the starting 11s. Then, of course, it was a back three for Rovers. Uh, started with Kaminsky between the sticks. We had Wharton, Ayala, Hyam at the back there. Travis Morton in midfield. Hedges on the right, Pickwick on the left. Smolich, he uh, controversially picked. Gallagher as well up there. Uh, and, of course, Diaz as well. Uh, quite an ageing front three when you look at 27-year-old Smolich, 27-year-old Gallagher, 23-year-old Diaz. Um, but uh, yeah, there is, uh, you know, fortunately there was a bit of age in that team. Hedges is 27, Heim is 26, Ayala's 31, Wharton's 25. So we're not the baby faces uh, that we all imagine. The only young gun really, that was Tyler Morton. He was the only 19 year old there. Um, anyone else really young? Don't think so. So yeah, it's, it wasn't that much of a young side. Uh, so let's bear that in mind uh, when, of course, we see the likes again. Uh, you know, there was no, there's no Adam Wharton. There was no, well, even though we did actually just get to the bench here. Uh, of course, we could see some of the subs coming on here. Clinton Moller coming on the 24, 21 years old, uh, years of age. Adam Wharton, 18 years of age. Bradley Dacarino, of course, getting on a little bit now. And Tyree Stone of 20 years. George Hurst is 23 already. So there ain't no, they're not that young. Uh, take a look at the opposition then. Of course, they have Victor Johansson between the sticks. Grant Hall, uh, Wes Harding and Lee Peltier at the back. That's a, that's a, a veteran back three with Barcelona, uh, Ben Willis, Rathbone. Uh, Norton Cuffey on the right hand side, Cohen Bramel on the left, or Big Knee up top. He was a handful, he was lively, and Tom Eves as well, who had a couple of sitters, uh, but he blew it as well. As for their substitutions coming up, Freeze, uh, set back there, Jamie Lindsay, 
Uh, Shane Ferguson, formerly of Millwall. Uh, and Connor Washington, 30. Only 30? I thought he's been around. I thought he's older than that. But regardless of what, let's take a look at the stats. Let's break it down, of course. We'll take... Don't you can look at a little bit of those match ratings. They've given it to Morton. Of course, I think he was officially the man of the match by, of course, Blackburn Rovers. Uh, but for me, I don't know. I think I would. it would be up there between... Uh, Smodich is in the mix as well. Uh, we had... Uh, what we got going on here? I think I picked the wrong stat here. The wrong graphic. Um, but uh, regardless... Uh, Error duels 113 apiece, tackles, more tackles from Rotherham than us. So, yeah, I think I picked the wrong ass graphic. But, anyway, these are the heat maps coming at you uh, for you. Um, of course, Rovers dominating possession, a lot of uh, possession on the right hand side as well, as you can see. Oh, that was the Hedges area. Again, question marks why uh, Callum Britton didn't start. I don't know. He didn't even get a, get a, get a minute at all. And Dak was only uh, left with about five minutes to spare at the end. Um, he had a couple of chances to maybe add to the tally. He was it had a bit of a, a, a bit of involvement in the final final flurry of, of chances. But ultimately, ultimately, it was just a cameo. It was just a cameo. But did we need him? I don't know. I don't know. And then, I, I, so I'm on the fence. Let's go big picture on this one. Let's go big picture. Producer, are you there? Are you listening? I said, let's go big picture. Yes, so, of course, there are the Dakarinos out there, the, the Dak fans. Um, I, I, I want to see Dak back. I do. I do. Um, is he done and dust? Is, is he the finished? Is he finished? Is he finished for Rovers? That's the question that's, that's going over my mind. And I, and I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know. I, I'd like to say no. I, I'd, I'd like to think he, there is still um, uh, uh, some, some, some play, some juice left in the tank. I think we could still milk that, milk that son of a bitch for a good old season and get double digits. None the same. He is a goal scorer. He is a creator. He is a bleeds blue and white. But will he actually, uh, will he actually feature in Ye JGT's uh, plans? Of course, he has his own style of play. He has, and uh, and when we when we hired him, we hired him to bring in his own ethos. And again. As it pains me to hurt, it hurts me to say these kind of things, but you just don't know. It might not be his cup of tea. Now, if I was, you know, if I was saying to pick up my dream dinner menu for tonight, uh, as somebody said to me, get a cheeseburger, I'd be like, shove your cheeseburger up your ass, mate. I don't want no cheeseburger. Uh, I want, a, I want, a, I want, a, I want a chicken burger. I want a chicken burger, and I want a nice tall glass of iron brew. No ice. Forget the fucking ice. Now, that could be the ice. It could be a cheeseburger. For whatever I know, it's what I want. It's what I want. Now, again, when you look at Dak, uh, uh, character-wise, he's one of a kind. He, he, he is... Uh, uh, and again, we've seen that across the board with Mowbray. He keeps players on for their dressing room stuff. You know, their Bennett's, their Mulgrews, their Downings over the years were there for not necessarily their moments on the pitch, but for the moments behind the scenes. Now, I think Dak is still young to be considered one of those. And we're playing, paying him a lot of money uh, to be a part of Blackburn Rovers setup. That, for me, is a concern. Of course, if you're, if you're paying the big bucks, you want to get the best out of him. Uh, and right now, we're not getting the best out of him. But, but does he actually fit the mould? Uh, we have to be big and ugly enough to accept whether or not he does. Or he doesn't. Um, he has been featuring in the cups, and I get, I'm sure he will feature. And the build-up to 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 the to the, the November shutoff where we where we switch over to Qatar 2022. Uh, but I, I, so I'm, I'm I'm expecting him to be involved somehow and a bit more of a of a hand in the game against Wigan. Now that game against Wigan again we'll preview it is a bit spicy. We've got scores to be settled there. A lot of nasty Wigan fans really uh, put the jinx on him. And I'd like him to rectify that. And I'd like us to rectify um, the mess, uh, of course, and, and kind of remind, just remind the Wigan fans, you know, who the fuck we are. You know what I mean? Anyway, so, the, yeah, Dak's got a lot of work to do. Um, I hope there is stuff. But, of course, there is a passage out. The passage out is, is in the northeast, and it goes by the name of Tony Mowbray, and it goes by the name of Sunderland. But, you know... Sunderland are prone to get rid of their managers pretty sharpish, so you just don't know what you're going to walk into on that one. Let's take a look at the official, their man and match ratings, I guess. This is from another third party, though. Uh, they gave it to uh, Morton with an 8.3. He had good vision, did have some good vision today. Diaz with an 8.3, Simon Smarsh with a 7.9. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think I think Smolich for me had involvements in all three of the goals, so I, I would give it to him. I'll give it to him. As you can see, the stat, the, the the stuff at the bottom there, uh, where all the action took place. A very really spicy second half. Um, and yeah, got to give. Despite Rotherham, you know they've got a threadbare squad, uh, not the biggest budget in the world. Um, um, so they're going to be there. They're going to struggle. They are going to struggle this season. 
and a new manager is going to take a little bit of time to, to bed into his, his team. So let's give him all the credit where credit's due. But that, my friends, is just a little bit take on what I thought. Here is JDT's thoughts and opinions about the match and a little bit more. Great performance, a great result. I asked for a reaction after, after Cardiff. The player gave me that reaction. I think it was, it was, it was extremely good. We were in control. Uh, our decision making on the ball, playing through lines, using Switzer play, in behind, great runs in behind was uh, was uh, on a high level, and we kept a clean sheet in, in that way. So uh, it's extremely positive, creating that many chances. Good to see Sammy getting a goal and assist, uh, and also to see for the rest of the boys that you can play in the 21 and suddenly you start, and you're important for 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 the for rowers. So that message to the group is extremely important as well. So uh, it was an enjoyable day. I don't know how many games we played at home now, but. Uh, I think it's difficult to come to Ewood Park. Uh, it's a bit of a fortress now. So our, our last games at home, I think, on an individual level and a collective level, uh, it's been it's been great. Uh, great team spirit and together the, togetherness with the fans. Do you feel that some of your players out there, just from watching the game once, played one of their best games this season today? Yeah, it, but football is not always easy. It looks easy. It looks easy for you. It looks easy for me, for the players and the fans. But football is not easy. It's difficult to make sometimes make the, the right choices when there's pressure on you, and and, and especially also uh, when there's result involved. I'm not talking about result, but uh, but always people and players are of course thinking about result. But it's a great performance. I enjoyed it. Sam Smodix has just been to see us and said that the, the captain Lewis Travis has already said to the players. Forget this game. Think about Tuesday's game already, and that's how this level works, isn't it? It is, uh, and, and and it's a great. We spoke about this. There's a great league, a very inconsistent league. You saw that today as well with the results. Um, a bigger club than us with a lot, a lot bigger budget uh, is 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 also inconsistent. So I think I think there's a bit of the charming of this league as well. I enjoy it. Sometimes it's a bit of a nightmare for me and the players and the fans, but but. If you look at the passion in football, it's great, isn't it? Uh, like a yo-yo roller coaster in, in that way. So, uh, but but Trevor is right. We we need to think about Tuesday. I know you talk about him a lot, and you're asked about him a lot. But today, how important is Ben to to get that second goal for you, which <coughs> largely put you in complete control of that match? No, uh, to get goals is uh, to. Uh, it's also control in the game. Eh? You get a little bit of momentum when you get goals, you get confident, and I think this victory will give us confidence. And, and the opponent I get a little bit more nervous. And, and so in that way, it was, it was nice. It was nice to see Ben get another goal for, uh, for a very good attack. Uh, I think our set play, set plays look dangerous as well. Uh, you saw Scott Walton with a bicycle kick. Uh, he almost broke his back. Uh, I think he was a little bit inspired uh, a couple of weeks ago with Haim. Uh, with that pillicle, uh, so it was a, it was a, it was a very very decent performance. And did you come out of it injury free, Jon, or has Ben picked up an injury today? No, nah, I think I think he's of course been travelling a lot. Uh, not normally he travels more because he goes really uh, uh, flying a lot. Uh, but um, hopefully he can be be ready doing doing next week. But we need to use the whole squad as well. So that's why we have a couple of players playing with the 21s, getting minutes in the legs and being ready to help rowers. All right then, let's take a little look at social media then, uh, shall we see what the fans have to say. Uh, Sonny uh, was critical of Smodic pre-game, uh, but unreal second half uh, performance and build Tyler Morton a statue. Uh, that was his reply to the match. Meanwhile, Jordan Kingsley says, Miles better today, time to lump my money on Wigan next week. Meanwhile, Matthew Grimshaw, Smodic had to be man of the match today. Out bloody stand. I'm up there with you, pal. I mean, Adam Satsuki said, home form is just fire. Just need to find their formula away from Ewood Park. Cracking result and bounces back from Cardiff. Buzzing for Sammy and Diaz, doing what he does. A big improvement all round today. Get in. Ads Med said, uh, absolutely brilliant result, lads. Come on, you blues. On to Wigan Tuesday. AD Musta said, fantastic win after a bad midweek. Hopefully a win streak occurs next match. Mark Johnson said, let's try for a draw at Wigan and break the win-lose cycle. Meanwhile, I'm going to go big picture on this one. Johnny Valley says, Sammy, you old slag there. Take it all out of the chiff. Uh, meanwhile, Philly Rovers, um, he's got his own halftime blurb there. Lynn Lewis 
Christmas. Joyous cheers to my big, my, my boy Ben for his goals, paying for it uh, yesterday and making my bank balance and my head a bit less sore. And Mike Delap said, Rovers are three points off top spot. And in some, we'll look at the table in a minute. Uh, nobody is saying the performance of Cardiff was any good and didn't deserve to be criticised. But this is exactly why spouting crap like worst Rovers side in living memory and totally clueless makes those responsible look daft. Talk of Ewood said, back on track. Morton Smolich and he is impressive today. Need to back it up with another some winnable fixtures coming up indeed and uh, there's a bit of back back and forth there between myself and a Burnley fan um, as I said if we keep the win lose win lose win lose cycle going we will win the game against Burnley in the middle of November so that's uh, what I was uh, slapping on about there is of course the rest of the fixtures this past weekend keep you out with a big two women over Reading to go they were close to top spot but we're right on their heels now I mean we Swansea two women over Sunderland Tony Moby's uh, boys taking the L on that one Blackpool with a three women over Watford uh, West Brom nil Luton Town nil uh, Birmingham three Bristol City nil Stoke three Chevy United one surprise surprise there Alex Neil uh, effect kicking on uh, there Burnley with the one win over Coventry we don't want to talk about that. Uh, Bill with two one win over Middlesbrough. Preston with a three two win over Norwich. Uh, action stations there. Cardiff three one de three one demolition job of Wigan. Tomorrow will be Huddersfield and Hull City. Uh, of course, it's what the table looks like right here right now. Of course, just three points separate first and seventh. Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. Uh, it is uh, very, very tight. Um, you don't know which way to go. You really don't know. You really don't know which way is it going to go. Uh, Sheffield United are in shit form. Norwich just won four for them. Uh, Reading now a couple of games without a win. So, yeah. As for going down, Coventry, Huddersfield and West Brom. Surely, surely Steve Bruce has got to walk. Uh, Middlesbrough have made the decision. Hull made the decision. West Brom, Huddersfield have made the decision. Uh, Rotherham were forced to make a decision. Stoke even called the decision. Watford even made a decision. So surely West Brom have got to make a decision. Anyway, uh, Rovers are in action midweek up against Wigan. Of course, a bit of score to settle on that one. Bristol City will host Preston as well in one of the catch-up games. Meanwhile, the full fixture list next Saturday will see Rotherham host a, a Huddersfield in the early kickoff on Saturday. Luton Town against QPR. Preston against Stoke. Sunderland against Wigan. Bristol City against Millwall. We've got Coventry against uh, Go to Cardiff. Sheffield United host Blackpool. Burnley take on Swansea. Reading take on West Brom uh, Watford against Norwich and then uh, Sunday it's Hull against Birmingham but the game of the day is at the Riverside it's Middlesbrough up against Blackburn and hopefully there's no new fucking manager bounce there please hold on give it to Leo give it to Leo for another week give it to Leo for another week otherwise it's going to be Sean Dyche or some fucker like that that's going to be a right old pain in the balls uh, but anyway that's of course my take on it be sure to get your own take on it as well uh, don't forget of course we got the midweek game against uh, uh, Wigan on Tuesday Pete should be back in the hot seat we like that rhyming slang there uh, I've, of course, done my bit and won. Now it's over to you, Pete, and it's over to you. You've got to go win now. You've got to bring home the three points against them nasty ticks. They owe, we owe them for the scum, scum that they spout about Braddy Dak. Let's smash them up. Let's get the three points. Let's end this win-lose, 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 win-lose streak with a fucking double win. And, of course, let's, uh, let's rise up the table and potentially go top of the pops. Until then, guys and girls, we're done.